So in this video, we are going to introduce or review a topic that you've probably heard before, which is scatter plots. But we need to take scatter plots to a new level beyond what you've probably done in middle school or high school. We need to talk about scatter plots in relationship to correlation and also getting to regression. And we're going to be doing uh, regression lines in the next unit. So what is correlation? Um, you may be have heard of the word correlation, like there's a correlation between, and they mention two things, such as bad weather and accidents, or there's no correlation between, and you can mention two things like, um, you know, shoe color and, uh, I mean, geez, you can kind of like just pick something completely at random, like let's say the roll of a six-sided die. So there's correlation, and correlation is the relationship between two variables. And we're only going to look at two variables at a time. And we also have to be very uh, cognizant that there are more than two variables, usually applying to each other at any given time. Uh, so we can look at the distance that someone has to drive to work and maybe job satisfaction. Job satisfaction is made of many, many different factors, but maybe that drive to work is an asset or a deficit um, to, to enjoying that job or being satisfied with the job. Uh, might be strong for some people and weak for others. So this is what we're going to be doing in this chapter, is looking at correlation between two variables, even though we really have to understand there's more than two variables usually at play. Um, now regression um, is the mathematical value to measure the strength and direction of correlation. And we're going to keep it pretty simple as this non-book def definition of regression has pretty much tried to explain is that we can either have um, a strong or a weak correlation, uh, or we can have a positive or a negative correlation. And so the regression number is the number that will help us determine whether there was a strong or weak, positive or negative correlation, or if we could just say no correlation. So the purpose of investigation of correlation and regression is to see if x and y are related. Now, the three different definitions that you just wrote down for correlation regression and the purpose here, these are very loosey-goosey definitions. They're kind of explained in a lower level, and if you want to see the actual mathematical definitions, you can check your book. But this is going to be what we are going to focus on in this chapter. Like, we're going to try to see if the factor of x influences the factor of y, and to what degree does it do so. But there is a danger, a big danger in correlation. And we have to understand that correlation, correlation is not causation. Correlation is not causation. This is important because you can find that there might be a high degree of correlation between X and Y, but it's not to say that X is causing Y, but there might be some influence there. Um, so it's important that you never, when finding a correlation, just say, oh, just because uh, this, this must be the only reason. I mean, we talked about um, there's a high correlation between bad weather and accidents, but there are other plays uh, factors at play. Um, obviously, the um, the quality of the cars on the road make a big difference. 
the cars now, like newer cars nowadays, are much safer than older cars. So you can't just say that it just caused the accident, but it was a factor in those accidents that might have happened. And you can look at a whole lot of examples. Just look up correlation is not causation, and you'll find a lot of great resources online. So what I want to do is I want to give you some scatter plots, and we're going to put some fictitious data after we explain what our independent or x variable is and our dependent y variable. Now remember the x, the x is the input, it's the variable we can change. Um, this is um, independent, so if you need to write that down again, it's we're going to be using x and independent variable interchangeably here. But let's talk about the um, hours of homework, hours of homework per week. Okay, so maybe I don't need the slash between the hours of homework per week, but there we go, hours of homework per week. So obviously you can expect that people who do more of those will get better grades. So let's put our GPA here on the side, a grade point average. And let's say we tracked a bunch of people and said, okay, how many hours of homework did you work per week? And we check their grade point average. What you kind of expect is you kind of expect for a, a low X, you have a low Y. Um, and then as you increase X, you do increase Y. And it may not be linear, but it may follow this pattern of dots moving from the upper left to the lower right. Or upper lower left to the upper right, excuse me, I said that backwards. Now, of course, you're going to have someone who does very little homework and does really good grades. We have those outliers, and we also have someone who might be in over their head and doing a lot of work and not getting the grades they want. But essentially, as you plot these dots in, you can see that there's a general trend that goes up like this. And this is called a positive correlation. This is what we see when we see dots in a general pattern moving from the lower left to the upper right, this is considered positive correlation. Now, we're not talking about whether it's strong or weak. We can just say the general trend of the dots are, are following this line. And this line that I drew is actually going to be something we're going to call the line of best fit, or the regression line. And we're going to do that in the next unit. Sorry, the next section. So this is an example of a very logical positive relationship. As hours goes up, your grade point average goes up. Okay, so now let's look at uh, something that isn't positive. Let's look at the number of workouts. Let's say you signed up for a gym or you basically uh, purchased a Peloton bike or you've, you've got some kind of workout regime. You're going to start at home through YouTube or another service you're paying for. But either way, you are going to do workouts and you're going to start with zero workouts and you're going to increase the number of workouts. Well, of course, we're going to talk about maybe losing weight. Okay, we're not trying to build muscle mass. We're just trying to shed some extra pounds, convert fat into energy and go from there. Well, obviously, you're going to start probably up here. But as the workouts continue, you might have some ups and downs. But for the general trend of your of your measurement as you increase more workouts, one would hope that the line is going to move down in this direction. Now you'll notice that it fluctuates up and down because weight does fluctuate. And we're not having a steep line because here this would be zero pounds and that would be not great. But here you have a negative correlation. And the negative correlation is a, is a good one. And I kind of like to use this example because the word negative doesn't have to mean bad. The word negative just means as X goes up, Y goes down. And you want Y to go down. You're trying to have Y go down, and this is a linear pattern. And actually, as most um, uh, people and nutritionalists will tell you, and maybe some weight loss experts, it's usually not a linear line. It's usually a little bit more exponential or maybe even logarithmic. But anyway, the reality is that you have a negative correlation here. Now this doesn't talk about strength. This just talks about the fact that you have a negative correlation. And in fact, if you wanna just try to get a little bit more advanced and level up here, this negative correlation is stronger than this positive correlation. Because here's another misconception. A lot of people look at the steepness of the line and say, well, wow, look how steep that line is. That must be a big, strong, positive correlation. That's actually not true. 
we measure strength of correlation by how close the dots are to the line, you know, vertically off the line itself. And you can see here, there's a lot of variation. You have outliers, you got people that are kind of like, like a swarm of flies or bees just kind of flying around this, this positive fit line. Whereas here, this is following a pretty steady trend and we can do um, hopefully some, you know, mathematics, some interpolation to basically look forward and see how well this is gonna work in the future. Although interpolation, which is looking forward, is a little sketchy. So there's our positive and negative. And then this last one is gonna look like a sneeze. It's gonna look like a giant sneeze where the dots are really scattered all over this like um, a chaotic swarm of flies. And let's maybe think this is age, how old students are when they go to college and their GPA. Well, what we're finding is that the ages of people going to college is getting wider and wider. We're having dual enrolled students come in earlier and earlier, so it's no longer customary to, you know, have the youngest person in the class be fresh out of high school as 18, as an 18 year old. And we're also seeing people entering the college later, changing their careers and decisions and, and getting some help um, with uh, low interest student loans. So here we have a scatter plot where there's absolutely no correlation between the um, age and the grade point average. So the line would be represented as a flat line, and this flat line is basically no correlation. Now, no correlation is a unicorn in a way because you're very rarely going to see a completely flat line. You're going to see a line that tilts slightly upwards or tilts slightly downwards, but that line that is tilting is still going to be considered positive or negative, but it's just not going to be very strong. So what we're going to do in the next couple uh, sections is we're going to determine whether uh, these lines are strong or weak, and we can do that with um, the regression number and some charts and tables and things like that. Believe me, I'm going to walk you straight through that process. So in summary, a positive correlation means as X goes up, Y goes up, a negative correlation means as X goes up, Y goes down, and I want to warn you on this negative correlation. Sometimes people say as, y, as X goes down, Y goes down. And that would be positive <laughs> because it, then you're moving backwards. If, because if you're, if you're going down on your X, you're moving to the left and then Y moves down. So if you basically reverse the direction of up and up to down and down, you're gonna get the problem wrong because negative means as X goes up, Y goes down. That's a negative correlation. Positive as X goes up, Y goes up. And no correlation means no visible no visible relationship. All right, probably should reset this document. And this gets you started on your first part of your homework where it's gonna have you look at some graphs and just explain, do you think it's positive, negative, or no correlation or no relationship? It's good to basically have that skill. Uh, to be able to guess the correlation, at least in terms of a non-numerical sense right now. All right, so this has been part one of our scatter plot review and also our introduction to correlation and regression. Stay tuned for part two of scatter plots and regression as we get out your calculator and plot some points.